Hey, I did it. We're recording. Hey, uh, my name's Anna and I'm um, tuning in from Fishers, Indiana. My name is Anna Keck and I have been working with this product for like the last six months, been getting incredible results for myself as well as a lot of my customers. And so I love this product and um, I love what it's done for myself and for others. So we have been doing this little Ask the Doctor event where we invite you in so you can learn more about specific issues and what it what this product can do to change your health because when you feel better you live better so tonight we're going to be talking about mental health if i remember correctly this is may is a mental health month and it is an issue that a lot of us don't realize the demons that some people fight and a lot of it is physical and if you can get yourself feeling better, some of those some of those issues go away. We've got some incredible, incredible testimonies later on tonight. But for right now, uh, Dr. Jeremy, if you will, I'm going to let you take it away and share with them um, all your wealth of knowledge on uh, mental health and uh, then share. Uh, we'll go into some testimonies afterwards. Absolutely. Thank you, Anna. Welcome, guys. My name is Dr. Jeremy Thornton. Uh, I'm an internist, a chiropractic physician, and a clinical nutritionist out of Missouri. I've been in practice uh, 23 years, uh, or maybe oh. a few months over that. <laughs> I am old. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, you know, I primarily work with autoimmune disease and chronic inflammatory conditions. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't going to uh, teach on this, but um, the Lord laid it on my heart, and I kept running across this topic and then May being mental health month. I'm like, okay, I'm supposed to talk about this. I wasn't going to talk about this yet. I didn't have it quite prepared. So I, uh, but I, I plugged away at it uh, for several hours today to put a PowerPoint together. And, and uh, I think it's a much needed topic. Um, yes. And I'm excited to talk about it tonight. Um, let me see if I can screen share. If you guys, uh, we're going to talk primarily about uh, anxiety and depression. Um, would love to know, um, if, if that's something you experience or have experienced or currently experienced, um, would love to know if you want to drop that in the chat. And then anytime along our journey tonight, if you have a question, just pop that in the chat as well. We'll, we'll definitely get around to that. And I'm going to try to share my screen if I can do that successfully. Um, we will try. You've got this. Can I do it? Boom. There it is. Yes. Yes. I'm getting quicker. Sometimes it takes me a while. Uh, so we're going to talk about being, means I'm, I'm very uh, um, well-versed in inflammatory conditions. Well, one thing that I came across uh, working with patients, and it wasn't necessarily on purpose, was I found out when I was addressing and getting to the root of their inflammation that their mood improved, their mental health improved, their depression improved, their anxiety improved. And at first, I, I didn't really get the, the connection um, and I'm from Missouri as a show me state. So it takes me a little while to see these things, you know, to, uh, to fully grasp and understand. Um, but there is a, a very uh, distinct connection. Um, and I would wager to say uh, that it is um, a majority of cases of anxiety and depression have an inflammation root cause. And so we're going to talk about that tonight. And you guys are aware the statistics of um, anxiety and depression have just skyrocketed over the last few years. Uh, it's, it's startling the numbers and percentages of people we see today uh, versus just a few years ago in 2019. So if you look at this uh, chart here, these little dotted lines down here are what the rates were percentage-wise in, in 2019. And look what has happened uh, in uh, 2020 through 2021 are what these numbers are right here. Uh, startling, um, up three and four times what they were um, just three years ago. And so um, uh, this is another reason I, I thought we really need to talk about this. And guys, also remember, I know there's probably people you'd like to be on here that aren't. There's people that I invited that I wanted to be on here that couldn't make it. Uh, we will record this um, and we will have this available to share. So if there's somebody on your heart that uh, you'd like to share this with, make sure you get with us later. Um, we will get the recording out to you and you can share that. So uh, this are some of the symptoms here of anxiety. 
And here are the, some of the symptoms here of depression. I'll let you look at that. You don't need me to read it all off to you. But uh, here in the middle are things that overlap, right? They can be, can be either or or both. Um, and these are some of the symptoms that people experience with anxiety and depression. And some people have both together. Um, these are some of the common, most common medical conditions that can lead to depression and anxiety. So I'll let you look at those over. Um, stroke, head injuries, a lot of neurodegenerative issues uh, and, and brain issues, of course, can cause depression, hypothyroid. Um, anxiety disorders can be hyperthyroid, low blood sugar, um, Cushing's disease, which has to do with the adrenals, right? Vitamin B12 deficiency, cardiovascular disease often produces anxiety, pulmonary diseases. So these are some of the things you think about. We need to mute somebody. We need to uh, maybe rule out uh, as causes underlying medical conditions, right? These are the most commonly thought causes of anxiety and depression. When you when you think about and you read about um, underlying causes, uh, brain chemistry almost always gets blamed for depression and anxiety, right? It has to do with serotonin and dopamine, and we need some we need some uh, anti-anxiety or antidepressant medications to influence brain chemistry to treat this condition. Um, I'm going to talk about some alternative thought processes to brain chemistry imbalance. Uh, stress, drugs, genetics can play a part. Poor nutrition, definitely. Physical health problems, like we just mentioned, can be underlying. Uh, traumatic events, uh, chronic stress, of course, trauma uh, as, as a child, trauma as an adult, um, uh, post-traumatic issues, things like this. Um, what I'm going to talk about is that brain inflammation is uh, almost always present in anxiety and depression. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. We used to talk about just about this component over here, neurotransmitters, was, was all we really talked about or focused on in relation to um, depression or anxiety, right? And that's because we have medications that can influence those things. But if you look at, at the overwhelming amount of research that's coming out now, uh, much less of this is surfacing in the research, a lot more about inflammation and cytokines, which are those inflammatory uh, messengers and chemicals, hormones, toxicity, and the gut. Um, these were a lot of the research is currently coming out in relation to depression and anxiety, and for good reason. So this is, a, this is an article here on inflammation in anxiety. And um, what they say is the presence of inflammatory responses and the crucial role of cytokines in depression have received the most attention. Um, the, the writers of this paper said, we offer an oxidative stress theory, um, which we propose works perhaps as a sensor of distress, the imbalance of which leads to neuroinflammation and causes uh, anxiety disorders. Um, let's see here. Bidirectional relationship of depression and inflammation, double trouble. In this review, we describe how the immune system regulates mood and the potential causes of the dysregulated inflammatory responses in depressed patients. Uh, inflammation is likely a critical disease modifier, promoting uh, susceptibility to depression. Controlling inflammation might provide an overall therapeutic benefit regardless of whether it is secondary to early life trauma, a more acute stress response, microbe, microbiome alterations, right? That goes back to the gut, genetics, uh, or a combination of these and other factors. So they're saying that inflammation, controlling that inflammation may help depression no matter what the source or what the cause is, right? Um, now, this is what I've, I've come across just fairly recently that just completely shocked me. Um, it, it turns out that uh, uh, SSRIs, right, our, um, our anti-anxiety medications, our benzodiazepines, right, our, uh, our antidepressant medications, of course, we, we all hear about how they affect, you know, serotonin and how they impact uh, brain chemistry. Guess what they also have in common? All of these drugs are also anti-inflammatories. Let that sink in. Not only uh, have we heard about all of how they impact brain chemistry, right? This is how they're supposed to work, but all of them have anti-inflammatory actions in the body. So 
are we influencing neurotransmitters or are we just suppressing inflammation in the brain? That's a big wow. question mark. And, uh, and this blew me away. I had no idea that these medications had anti-inflammatory effects uh, on the body and on the brain, but indeed they, they do. Um, this one here is talking about SSRIs, um, uh, moderate acute anti-inflammatory effects. These anti-inflammatory effects may underlie uh, anxiolytic effects of these medications. Um, so that is, uh, was uh, shocking here. I'm trying to, I know you can't see my screen, but I'm trying to move everybody around so I can see. Um, here's another uh, article, the anti-inflammatory mechanisms of antidepressants. Um, and so, uh, you know, again, are we, are we maybe treating inflammation uh, as the root cause of these uh, with these medications? And so that, that brings up the question, well, where does the brain inflammation come from? And I'm so glad that you asked. Uh, so this is going to bring us back to the gut. And if you've been with me any length of time with our Ask the Doctor series, um, we frequently circle back to this um, underlying cause, right, Anna? We've, Everything we're always goes back to the gut. Everything. <laughs> we, we always end up talking about the gut again, and, uh, and for good reason. The role of inflammation and the gut microbiome in depression and anxiety. So uh, this is in 2019. So there's, there's a ton of research on how inflammation and gut health impact mental health right? You've probably heard that the gut is the second brain. In fact, the gut makes more serotonin than our brain does. And so if we're, if we're not addressing or looking at the gut in mental health, we're often going to fall short and we're just treating symptoms, maybe. Um, and so this is, this is why uh, when I'm working with patients that have uh, mood disorders or, or, or mental health issues, we have to consider the gut. We have to have to. Um, and what we've talked about in other uh, webinars is leaky gut and how leaky gut, you've probably heard that term before, how leaky gut leads to leaky brain and how leaky brain leads to neuroinflammation. And we've already seen some of the research how neuroinflammation can cause anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I won't go into a lot of detail on leaky gut and, uh, and, and leaky brain. Uh, we have webinars where I, I do a whole 30, 45 minutes on just this topic. Um, and so if, uh, if you find that interesting and want to dig a little bit more into gut health, uh, we've got recordings of those webinars you're welcome to have access to. Um, but this is what the gut lining would, looks like, right? These cells right here, um, they call these where these cells come together, they call these tight junctions right here, okay? And so uh, here is, of course, the inside of the gut. This is where our food goes through. This is where we have, uh, we can have trouble with infections, right? We can get we have good bugs in there, right? We can get bad bugs in there. Um, we can get things causing irritation like gluten, for example, uh, things causing irritation like uh, medications, um, 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 anti, uh, um, my mind went blank there for a second. Um, you know, things that um, are pesticides is what I was trying to think of that, uh, that cause irritation in our gut lining. Uh, we can have food sensitivities, right? All of these things can cause trouble here. And what happens is when we have some irritation going on, um, these cells can reduce, release a protein called zonulin. Zonulin is a protein that actually helps to open up these tight junctions and allow things through. But the more irritation and inflammation we have in the gut causes more and more zonulin release. And before you know it, these tight junctions aren't so tight anymore, mm. right? See how they come over here and we get inflammation. See these little villi here is how we absorb nutrients. Um, and, and they kind of get chewed up and we have these wide open spaces between these cells. And this is where they get the term leaky, right? Things are now able to leak through this intestinal lining. We have compromised um, uh, an intestinal border here. And now these things like uh, uh, bacteria and, and yeast and toxins, um, bacteria re release these, these things called lipopolysaccharides. These lipopolysaccharides cause a lot of tissue damage 
Um, and then now we have these food protein particles are coming through here. Our immune system is starting to see some of this stuff, starting to label some foods as, as bad guys, right? Now we're developing some food allergies, which just creates more inflammation and irritation. Um, but here's what's interesting. Notice what these cells here in the gut look an awful lot like these cells down here. These cells right here are what it looks like in our, um, our blood-brain barrier. You've probably heard that term used before. There's a blood-brain barrier that protects our brain from harmful things coming through there and, and entering the brain and, and causing damage to the brain. Um, but one thing that's interesting is when we have damage and irritation and inflammation in the gut causing an, an immune response and tissue damage and immune dysfunction, uh, this zonulin that gets increased is in the bloodstream, makes its way up to the brain and starts to tell these tight junctions they can relax too. And so now we have an opening of these passageways where we're starting to get uh, increased permeability of this, this uh, blood-brain barrier. And now things which should never have entered the brain are getting through there. Wow. These lipopolysaccharides uh, come across, uh, these pathogens, right? These bacteria uh, and toxins and inflammatory cytokines from the inflammation that's going on in the gut antibodies, all of these things start to cross this blood-brain barrier, and the, uh, and the end result is neuroinflammation, okay? Neuroinflammation started in the gut, caused uh, a leaky brain, right? The blood-brain barrier, and now we're dealing with neuro neuroinflammation. And so uh, if, you, if you don't have a functional medicine doctor or a, or a, a natural-minded physician, to, to maybe work with you on gut if you're dealing with, with um, depression, anxiety, and you've never explored this connection, I would encourage you to, uh, to find somebody to work with to, that's gonna look at gut, maybe look at food allergies, look for infections, um, look for things that could be causing a leaky gut and ultimately leading to a leaky brain and inflammation in the brain, which could be the source of the anxiety and depression, right? So I'm going to share my favorite all-around nutrient to support all of this, okay, which is curcumin, okay? Curcumin, you probably know, comes from turmeric, the root turmeric, um, and is kind of what I call the star of the show uh, of turmeric. It is the medicinal component um, that has all the magical qualities that, uh, that we've studied for years. Um, and just to, just to touch on a few things that we know about curcumin with the things that we've talked about tonight, curcumin... Um, mediated regulation of the intestinal barrier. So uh, this one goes into a lot more details on how curcumin repairs that intestinal lining. It repairs the leaky gut situation, the inflammation that, that, that restores those tight junctions again. Um, this article talks about how in cur curcumin inhibits that lipopolysaccharide, remember I talked about how that gets released in the gut and then goes to the brain. Uh, curcumin inhibits lipopolysaccharide-induced neuroinflammation. And this, uh, uh, this study, this article goes into a lot more details about that. Um, a systematic review of the antidepressant effects of curcumin. Um, and we go on down here, move things around here again so I can see. Curcumin improves depressant and anxiety behavior in humans. It can increase monoamines and brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, you may have heard of that before, levels and may inhibit the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines and uh, neuronal apoptosis in the brain, that's, that's cell death in the brain. Curcumin uh, enhanced insulin sensitivity, it reduced cortisol levels, and it reversed metabolic abnormalities. Wow. Uh, beneficial effects of, na yeah, wow. Uh, Nanocurcumin supplements on depression and anxiety, and this was in diabetic patients with peripheral neuropathy. Um, there was a significant reduction in the mean score of depression uh, in the nanocurcumin group. In addition, a significant fall was found in the mean score of anxiety in the nanocurcumin group. All right, so we, we see all these things, how curcumin can repair the gut, it can reduce inflammation in the brain, it can, it can help with anxiety and depression, but here's the hidden secret and why more people haven't seen the results that we see in the literature and in the research with curcumin, and that has to do with bioavailability. And what that means is, is if a substance is bioavailable, means if you take it orally, 
it can get into the bloodstream and have a beneficial effect. You know, whether that's a medication, whether that's a natural supplement, whether that's a vitamin, an herb, right? It has to get uh, through the gut, bypass the liver, get into the bloodstream, ultimately get into the cells so it can, can do some, some good. And this has been a struggle with curcumin. This article talks about it. It goes into, uh, despite the positive effects, a major criticism of curcumin is its poor bioavailability. In fact, some researchers have argued that given its unstable, reactive, and non-bioavailable nature, further clinical trials on curcumin are unwarranted. So some scientists say, don't even study it anymore. It's worthless to take orally. Curcumin has been confirmed to exhibit very poor bioavailability, with many studies showing very low or even undetectable concentrations in the blood and extra intestinal tissues. Major reasons postulated are due to its poor absorption, rapid metabolism, chemical instability, and rapid systemic elimination. So it, uh, what does get into the body and into the bloodstream is very un unstable, and the body rapidly breaks it down and gets rid of it. Okay, we're going to see some some uh, some more information on that, and that is until now. Uh, and this is what we're excited to share is a new technology, right? And this new technology has been applied to this very important substance called curcumin. And with this technology, we have been able to take curcumin, which is a lipid-like material, right? Curcumin and turmeric are a lipid-like material, which is very difficult in and of itself to get into a bloodstream that's mostly water, right? We know the lipids or oils and waters you don't mix well. Um, and then we have to get it not only into the bloodstream, but then we have to get it into the cells. Uh -huh. um, this uh, technology increases bioavailability up to 277 times. Um, and so it would take about 17 pounds of turmeric root to equal 10 drops of this technology. So I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about actually the three technologies that they use. So first, they, they extract the curcumin one out of the turmeric. Okay, so it's just the curcumin, just that medicinal component that, that has all the magic that we read, read about in these studies. Then they apply nanotechnology, which shrinks those curcumin particles uh, down to less than 30 nanometers. We're going to talk about how small that really is here in a second. Uh, and then they wrap that lipid-like material in a micelle, and a micelle is able to carry whatever's inside it easily through water or through fat or through oil, easily getting this into uh, the bloodstream, easily getting this into the cells, um, and this is what it would look like. Here's the curcumin inside, and this is the micelle surrounding it that's able to carry it. It's like a transporter. So how small is 30 nanometers? Well, if you compare it a red blood cell is 7,000 nanometers wide. Um, a human hair is 50 to 100,000 nanometers thick. A sheet of paper, 75,000 nanometers thick. This looks like a nail, but it's a pinhead. A pinhead is a million nanometers wide. And we're talking about particle sizes of this technology less than 30 nanometers in size. And so this is why we're able to uh, get this at significant levels in the bloodstream into the cells and into the brain, which is what we're of course excited about uh, in talking about tonight. And so this is just a, just a little bit of, a, of an idea on how traditional curcumin um, uh, is, is at getting into the bloodstream. So this is a single oral dose of 2000 milligrams of, whoops, of curcumin, right? Passing your seat belts, this is exciting here, guys. Look at the peak here, right there uh, in one hour. Okay, this is when the curcumin peaks in the bloodstream at uh, almost uh, uh, undetectable levels. And then look what happens at two hours. Uh, it's, it's, it's gone, undetectable um, with standard curcumin. Okay, and this is what we're talking about here. Um, this is what we're able to reach in men and women with this technology. And this is compared to traditional curcumin down here. You can't even see it come off of the baseline, um, but it, it, it's barely off the baseline down there. But look what's so exciting. We talked about how the oral curcumin by itself was gone in an hour, or no, it peaked in an hour, it was gone in two hours. Um, this is two hours, four hours, eight hours, 12 hours, 16 hours, 20 hours. 24 hours, we're still measuring curcumin in the bloodstream. Um, and, and, and this is after just a single dose. A single dose, we're still at therapeutic levels 24 hours later, which is just mind blowing when you think about um, 
uh, the, the history of curcumin and its ability to do things in the human body. Um, this is why we're excited about this technology and why we're seeing um, just amazing responses uh, in people with, with a wide variety of health conditions. And so um, I know I've babbled on quite a bit already. Uh, Anna, do you have any questions for me or have there been questions? I can't hear you, you're muted. <laughs> Uh, no, so far I've just been reading through uh, different people have been talking about depression and how they deal with it. I do agree with Lisa and I think you would say the same thing. Make sure you confer with your doctor if you're thinking about getting off of any of the medications that you're currently on. You don't want to crash and burn and that can no. happen pretty easily. Um, no, that was great information. Um, I don't think a lot of people realize how much of the serotonin is made in the gut. You know, if you don't have a healthy gut, you struggle with those issues. So that is, that's huge. I was shocked whenever I heard that the first time. Somebody's asked, what about acid reflux? Um, sorry, I'm looking at the, um, well, that's quite a change in topic, <laughs> Melanie. <laughs> But um, acid reflux is, of course, you know, is, is going back to the gut. Um, and uh, there's a lot of different underlying causes of acid reflux. Sometimes there can be infection with things like H. pylori can, can are actually present an awful lot of the time. Whether it's tested for or detected for is another story. Um, but oftentimes there is, uh, uh, you know, they, we, they get blamed on too much acid, right? We, they, they were told that there's too much acid in the gut, so we need to suppress the acid um, and um, to, to control that when that's really um, rare. Um, usually, we're, we don't have enough acid uh, in the stomach, and that's why we're starting to get some indigestion because we're not breaking things down well in the stomach. Um, and, and so we have to get to the source of the acid, the, the acid reflux. Um, and um, curcumin would be another thing to consider with acid reflux only because we usually have inflammation going on in that lower esophagus and stomach, right? That lining. Um, and we do know about the healing benefits of curcumin to those tissues. And so it could be a helpful uh, tool. Thank you for explaining that. I'm really excited tonight because I know you've got a couple amazing testimonies lined up to share with everybody about what this product has done with them um, and suffering with those issues because it's not fun. Um, Absolutely. Um, somebody uh, asked about bipolar. Um, there is suggestions of all mental health having an underlying neuroinflammatory component. Um, and so I would definitely consider, um, consider that as well. Um, Nicole, are you here? Hey, I am. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for <laughs> hopping on. I just wanted you to come on and just kind of share a little bit about your history, a little bit about your experience um, with this technology. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I, I love seeing everybody's questions. Um, I think that I know I was furiously taking notes because there was so much additional information you shared that just really blew my mind. Um, I, I will tell you, I have been an avid, uh, you know, Vitafy user uh, for the last seven months. Okay. And um, I could talk to you about all the different things that I wanted to have help with when I first started. Um, and none of those would be depression and anxiety. Okay. But I am here to tell you that I am happy uh, to tell you uh, that was one of the things that I really didn't think that it would help with, um, but it absolutely has. So I have suffered with, uh, you know, depression, um, you know, anxiety for the better part of my life, right? Going on 40 years, uh, really peaked in my teen years. And, um, you know, especially when people talk about like seasonal affective disorder, um, winter months with no sunshine living in Northwest. Ohio. Um, I, you, 
I, I really just hibernate quite honestly. And, you know, working full time, being a mom to three uh, very active uh, young men, I, I don't have time for that. Um, and unfortunately, they live many years with a mom that slept a lot, you know, because she just literally could not get out of bed. Um, or I was having a lot of brain frog and, and the depression was just, um, it was unbearable sometimes, quite honestly. Um, so all that to say, you know, over the years, I have tried almost everything that you could think of, um, you know, and I was really the last two years um, looking for natural ways uh, to improve my health. And so thankfully, I was shared uh, with the liquid gold drops, and I started taking those. And honestly, about the two month mark for me, I was like, you know, I, I think I feel better because I started taking about October and you know that's about Christmas time and I'm like this is really the time of year where I'm definitely wanting to hibernate I'm super stressed out it's not a good time of year even though everybody says you should be happy around the holidays um, that just wasn't my reality quite honestly and then I thought that I really was having a good time and I hadn't been spending a lot of time in bed. So um, I started seeing more and more comments about the, the benefits people were seeing from the liquid gold and how it was positively, you know, kind of stabilizing their mood and they were seeing improvements with depression and everything. Um, so I took it to the next level and I actually had a conversation with my primary care physician, um, you know, and I was on several different medications um, and I was able to, with the, the help of my doctor, okay, Okay, so again, want to just really stress that do not pull yourself off of your medication uh, that will throw your body into chaos and nobody wants to go through that. Um, but with the help of my doctor, I actually was able to wean myself off of some of my medication. And, um, uh, you know, it's just been after a lifetime, quite honestly, of feeling not quite capable of handling life the way I should have or putting up fronts like I was perfectly fine, but in the four walls of our home was a completely different story. I'm actually really proud to share my story because I want everybody else who is in that same situation to know they're not alone, but I also want them to see that there is, there is hope out there, right? And I told you, Dr. Jeremy, when we were talking about this, this is a very critical and timely conversation, you know, because there are so many people that struggle with depression and anxiety, but there really has been in the path, uh, past like a stigma against talking about it. People are so afraid. They don't want it to jeopardize their family relationships, their friends. They don't want it to seep into their workplace. Um, but unfortunately, you know, recently the world lost Naomi Judd. And that was a very public display of, you know, somebody who unfortunately succumbed to the demons they were fighting. And, you know, knowing that there is a natural relief out there that people just don't correlate to helping with the brain through the way of the gut and everything. Um, there, there's just not enough people talking about it. So that's, that's me to just say, I'm a huge proponent of this seven months going strong. Um, you know, I've done a lot of other things also, but this has definitely been a game changer for me and my family. That's awesome, Nicole. Wow. I know you've also experienced a few other uh, side effects uh, uh, with this technology. Can you just briefly share what other things that you've uh, noticed besides, of course, just the mental health? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I've struggled with an autoimmune or several autoimmune conditions for the last 10 years, basically. And that's what led me to really looking for some more natural um, solutions. And so through that, I have, <laughs> I've weaned myself off of some of those additional prescriptions that have horrible um, side effects, unfortunately, even though they can do a lot of good. Um, and my joint pain has subsided. And before this, um, like it would everything I would try would kind of dull it and it'd get a little bit better, but it was always there in the background. Right. And I could never just completely get over that hurdle with it. Um, but you know, to the point, honestly, that there were some days my joints hurt so bad, my husband would have to help dress me. And, and that is just not a lifestyle that I am ready to, you know, <laughs> put up with quite honestly. Um, and so the joint pain is gone. Right. And if I notice it to start to creep in, like within an hour or even 10 minutes of taking, um, you know, a couple drops of turmeric, uh, I, I really am in a better place. Uh, my brain fog has gotten much better. 
uh, which is amazing. Um, my energy is great. Uh, my mood has definitely, um, you know, been more stable. Um, I'm pre-diabetic, so I'm really working on controlling my blood sugar, uh, so that I can avoid, right. Tipping that scale and getting right onto the full blown diabetic. Um, I actually, you know, because of that, uh, within the first couple of months that I started, I was able to lose 12 pounds, um, because of that blood sugar kind of leveling. And, you know, I used to struggle with migraines. I mean, really, really bad migraines, like several times every single month without fail. And since I started this, I have not had an active migraine. And uh, so that right there is just uh, speaks volumes as well. And I'm definitely happy to share that with anybody. <laughs> that is wow. so beautiful. That is, that's, that's amazing. Thank you, Nicole. Um, hey, you're I so sure welcome. That was a blessing. Um, Lisa, are you on? <laughs> I have to try to figure out how to unmute myself, but I am here. There she is. Hey, thanks for hopping on. I just wanted you to share a little bit about your experience for us. Okay. Um, actually, by the way, Nicole, I too had suffered from migraines. And now that you mention it, I haven't had a migraine since I started. And I got them frequently. So you said that I'm like, oh, I'm just going to add that to my list. Um, so that's kind of cool too. Um, so my story is a little unique. I had, I was diagnosed with cancer in 04 and I had Hodgkin's lymphoma. So it's the only cancer you can be cured from or considered cured from, um, but it takes five years. Unfortunately, in between the time that you are done with your treatment and to that five year date to like the nanosecond, you are holding your breath because you don't know what's going to come or what scan's going to come through, or if that itch on the back of your neck is Hodgkin's back or so, um, I, I developed a lot of anxiety. Um, I think I've had it all my life. I think it just kind of reared its really ugly head during those five years. Um, and, uh, Dr. J your presentation hit home so hard. Um, I went after, after, um, after I was, I uh, hit that five-year mark, I went to the doctor and I finally, I couldn't stand the person I was in my own skin. So I felt bad for those around me. And I went and I asked for help. They uh, put me on medicine to begin with. Things got a little better, but I felt like it was masked. I, I felt like I was in a cloud. It, it dulled it, but it didn't fix it. And I'm a big proponent of getting to the root cause. Um, I tried a couple different medicines. Nothing ever really worked. I kind of just went off of it slowly um, and with help. Um, but it just, I could never find anything to work. So then I decided to take it into my own hands, start talking to, um, a naturopath, start talking to, to looking at homeopathic ways. Um, I tried oils. I tried food, changing food, looking at the food I took in, um, and Dr. Jeremy's presentation really truly hit home because, I did have a leaky gut. I did have a lot of things. I do have an aversion to gluten and all of this was causing further damage in addition to the chemo that just rip roared through my intestinal system. And my gut was in a complete and total disarray. So it's it's a wonder that I have did survived. You see the guy out of the plane? No, here. Oh. Sorry. It's a wonder that I, no, you're fine. It's a wonder that I survived that long without anything. Um, and I was just getting by and actually the curcumin is a side of the helping the anxiety for me was a side effect of the curcumin because I didn't come here for that. I came here for other things, but all of a sudden, I think I was like two weeks in my chest no longer felt like it was going to crack in half. And I was like, Hey, wait, I haven't felt that in a while. What's going on? And, um, of course, like an idiot, you know, a couple of weeks into it, I stopped taking it. Cause I'm like, surely it's not the curcumin. Right. So I stopped taking it and, uh, my anxiety came back, like within hours, I was like, all right, so we're not doing that again. Um, so I got hopped right back on that curcumin. Um, and I, I'm super proud to say that I'm not cured. And I don't think I'll ever truly be cured of the anxiety because there's other things with it, right. That go along with this, but my chest hasn't felt like it was going to crack in half and I don't feel 
and some of you who some of you who do suffer with anxiety and depression, you'll understand this. Like sometimes it just feels like it creeps over your head and into your head and it just starts taking over and it, you just don't know what to do with it. And I haven't felt that way. And I haven't, Nicole, I, you and I, man, similar lives. I've got three kids. I think it's a three kid thing, but like you, I, I haven't, I haven't lost my cool with my kids like seriously lost my cool. I, I have, I've been able to be more level-headed. I've been able to listen more with my heart to learn rather and, and to be able to respond intelligently to my kids rather than yell at them because I am a yeller. I'm Italian. I'm a yeller. I yell anyway when I talk, but it just, I, I can't even tell you the positive effect that this has had on my life. And, and, and I don't think I'll ever stop using any of this. And, and I agree to we need to talk more about this. You know, you, you, you need to find a tribe and you need to, you need to talk. Cause I think, I think the pandemic really kind of did a number on us finding our tribe and getting out there and talking with each other. Um, but, it, but I really truly feel that you all need to start getting around, especially during, especially during mental health awareness month, like get out there, talk with people. Um, I noticed Dr. J, I'm just going to say something on the the um, acid reflux. My kid has also has really bad anxiety and extremely bad acid reflux. I put him on both the Synbify and the curcumin. Uh, he's taken two of each daily. So 20, he's taken 10 drops in the morning, 10 drops at night. And he's taken two of the Synbify in the morning. Um, within three days, his acid reflux disappeared. Um, and I have noticed a major shift in his mood. I, I don't know. I mean, to me, to me, this is kind of miraculous because I know he has suffered greatly with this, um, but it works and, and it's working really well for our family. Wow. wow. Oh, sometimes you just don't know what to say to you, doctor. I know it's just, you just, uh, just trying to not cry, you know? Um, it's powerful and um, it's life changing. And, uh, and we've seen it so many times. These are just two examples of, of what we've seen. And, and, and neither one <laughs> took it for that, right? It was that they were not even expecting that to be a benefit. Um, and, and we're not talking about um, root causes of mental health issues. We're not talking about how inflammation could be involved. Um, and, and, we, and we need to, and people need to hear about this. Um, for something to be natural with um, no side effects um, that uh, can be taken with nearly any prescription medication that can have such a profound effect, uh, and, and we don't hear about this, we don't hear about those benefits of it. And, and, and so I just encourage you guys that, um, that are, are with us in, in sharing this technology that you know, keep your eyes out for your friends and family that are struggling because it could be uh, an, an easy fix or at least an easy aid that could make their life completely different and could impact them in a major way. Um, so anyway, um, did, we, did we cover all the questions? I think we did cover up a lot of, you know, covered a lot of the issues. Lisa and Nicole, your stories were just so stirring and so powerful. I'm telling you, both of you have an amazing platform. It is mental health awareness. You need to go live on your wall. You need to be life givers, hope givers. There are people out there that need to hear exactly what you shared with us tonight. So I will have this uh, recording available for everybody by morning. I'm not going to promise it'll be tonight, but I will have it by morning. And Dr. Jeremy, I will have it before noon. By the way, is that turmeric box on the file cabinet there? Is that like strategically placed? I've been watching that all night long. I'm like, I bet she did that on purpose. I just couldn't help myself. Right there. It's a, yeah, right it's there. actually a textbook. Oh, is it a textbook? Oh, that is powerful. Good job. Good placement. You should become an interior decorator. I mean, that's a great placement of what you're wanting to talk about. But anyway, I want to thank each and every last one of you for coming on tonight and for 
hearing what the doctor had to say, how he shares with us his powerful knowledge about how to make our bodies healthier, how we can live life more fully as we do natural things to take care of ourselves. And once again, Lisa and Nicole, thank you so much for sharing your powerful testimonies. They were amazing. Uh, I, I'm glad he talked for a little while because I don't know I could have talked. I was like losing it over here. Um, but if you were invited by somebody, if somebody loved you enough to invite you here tonight, they really do care about you and your health and they want to see you have a better life. Get back with them. They will help you get the product you need to get on your road to better health, okay? And if you don't have somebody, reach out, reach out to myself or Dr. Jeremy. We'll help you find who the person was who invited you and we will get you back to them, okay? We really do want to help you on this journey. We also have some amazing, amazing, amazing testimonial and product uh, knowledge groups that we uh, use. And so have that person who invited you here add you into those groups so you can read other people's testimonies on other health issues. And as you read those, you're thinking, oh, I know so-and-so who has this. I know somebody who has this. And then you can reach out and help your friends live a better life. So anyway, with that all being said, if nobody else has anything else to say, I'm going to say thank you all so much for showing up this evening. God bless you all. And I truly believe, Dr. Jeremy, you were listening to God when you decided to share this tonight. I truly think it's a very timely subject and maybe we should even address it again at least one more time this month. Sounds good. Thank Go you guys for showing up. Appreciate you. Love you all. Thank you all for coming. Be blessed. Good night.